Next up, John Sebastian, personal favorite of mine, Led the Love and Spoonful, a group which put out some of the greatest hits the 60s had to offer. Hot town, summer in the city, back of my neck getting dirt and gritty. Bend down, isn't it a pity? Doesn't seem to be a shadow in the city. And then you know you better make up your mind. And pick up on one and leave the other behind. Still my heart, John Sebastian joins me now. John, it's great to meet you. Thanks so much for being here. How do you do? So most people like you are supposed to move to Greenwich Village. You were born in Greenwich Village. Would I, you be you had you not been? I don't think I could have been. Uh, I had so many opportunities just laid out for me. It was like, I mean, you know, there's like the Hollywood version of the kid who is like, all of their parents are cool. And that's how it was. My, my mom was this very funny uh, writer for uh, radio. Uh -huh. And my dad was this wonderful concert artist, played the chromatic harmonica, play, uh, harmonica like, like nobody else. And uh, around my apartment were things like Burl Ives walking in and trying to talk my dad into letting Woody Guthrie stay there for a week or two. Was the village where when you were a teenager you met Bob Dylan or was that in Woodstock? Where'd you hook up with him? No, I did meet him in the village. Uh, obviously, we were both uh, hanging out in the same clubs and we had all the same idols pretty much. And, and uh, one of them was Victoria Spivy, a wonderful blues singer who uh, sang with the great jug bands. And when she found out that uh, me and uh, uh, 10, 11 other kids had started a jug band, she started kind of helping us out and showing us the way. So of your many incarnations, and there have been quite, obviously the Love and Spoonful is this huge thing. I read so many times, they're the Beatles of America. When you heard that, was that not like incredibly intimidating? The Beatles, I mean, you were huge. The Beatles of America, what'd that do for you? Well, I knew, I knew the pay scale difference, so <laughs> it'll keep you humble. But did it, did it make you nervous or you decide this is great? No. I, I can't say that, and it, 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 it's, I don't know, it's, what's the opposite of false modesty? Uh, 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 whatever it is, we got the whatever point. Whatever it is, yeah. Did I, you ever hear what they're, did you ever meet them? Yeah, sure. And what did they say about sure. that? Sure, well, um, actually, Paul has been very complimentary over the years, and I, uh, somebody just told me I have to read his new, uh, his new autobiography, because apparently he speaks very fondly of me, and uh, well, you that's know, two of us who speak very fondly of you. That's great. Then. It's great. And yeah. So, am I right chronologically? It was a year after you left the Love and Spoonful that you were at Woodstock, yes, where you now live. But did you, a was little bit more, but yeah, okay. close enough. And you're sitting there, if I recall correctly. In fact, it's there now, with an acoustic guitar in front of 500,000 people. What was that like? Well, darling, be home soon, right? Remember, I I had been playing for uh, concert audiences whether they were 50 or 100. Uh, and I know everybody thinks that that would be really different if there were umpteen million people or whatever, but that was a very intimate setting. It really was. That felt like a coffee house. You know, of all the great contributions you've made, would you say like, uh, uh, causing tie-dye to go mainstream was one of the most important ones that John Sebastian brought to American culture? Well, I'm delighted that, that somebody uh, feels that way. Uh, Ann Thomas was the woman that taught me how to do that. and You did them she, yourself, your own shirts, although, right? Although those things that you see on me, I did. Very disappointed you not wear one today, uh, I must I, say. I'm I, thrilled I, you're here, but I am. But I, I don't. People are sometimes disappointed. So uh, for those who were going to get to see this, are you going to play a minute for us right now? Well, sure. Why not? Doing? Well, let's see. Maybe I'll play uh, Avalon's My Hometown. Go do it. Avalon's my hometown, always on my mind. Avalon's my hometown, always on my mind. Pretty women in Avalon, they want me there all the time. 
Now Avalon's just a small town Ain't got no great big range Avalon's just a small town Ain't got no great big range But pretty women in Avalon They sure can spin my chain <laughs> I love that. Do you think you'd be doing this 50 years ago? Uh, you know, uh, me and my road manager have been Roscoe partners on and career, off yeah. Roscoe uh, for almost 50 years. And uh, we were talking about when we used to sit in the car on the way into New York and go, you think we'll be doing this when we're 60? <laughs> and we're already 12 years You know, Peter Wolf said to me, he was in his that. 70s, I asked him the same question. Yeah. He says, no one said Picasso was too old, Hitchcock was too old, you're an artist, you're an artist. Couldn't agree more. If we come see you in Plymouth or, uh, or in Beverly this weekend, what are we going to hear you do? Well, I'm going to try to give a pretty, pretty much of a cross-section of the various uh, times that I've uh, had visibility, or even not. Joni Mitchell said once at a, a concert or on a record, uh, when she was, someone screamed out, play an old song or whatever it was, she said, no one asked Van Gogh to paint a starry night again, man. Are you okay playing all the old songs in addition to the stuff you've done in all the intervening years? Yeah, look, uh, there might be a difference in, in what we perceive as our jobs. <laughs> uh, for, for me, I, I think that uh, it is, incumbent upon me to uh, play a certain amount of the material that got me to where I could stand on the stage. Uh, it, it does change every now and then. I'm a very lucky guy in that regard that I have more than three songs that are visible so that I don't, I'm not nailed to those same ones. I can switch around. Mm -hmm. I can go over here, over there. Well, I'm a lucky guy because I'm going to be hearing you this weekend. Well, John Sebastian, you. it was a pleasure. It would be good to see you.